Imagine the most powerful explosion you've ever seen. Maybe it's a rocket launch or a supernova, or even a gamma ray burst. Now multiply that power by a million. Then multiply it again. And again. Still not even close to the monsters we're talking about today. Hidden in the darkest corners of our universe lurk objects so powerful they can outshine entire galaxy clusters. Objects so bright that if one appeared too close to Earth, it would flood our entire galaxy with deadly radiation. These cosmic engines pump out more energy in a single second than our sun will produce in its entire lifetime. And they can keep going for millions of years. But here's the most mind-blowing part. These monsters might be the reason you're alive to watch this video right now. Hey, space explorers. Today we're diving into one of the most extraordinary discoveries in the history of astronomy, quasars, the most powerful continuous engines in the known universe. We're going on an epic journey that will take us from the early days of radio astronomy to the very edge of the observable universe. We'll uncover how these cosmic monsters were discovered, what powers them, and why they might be essential to the very existence of galaxies like our own. Let's travel back to the IME 50s. Eisenhower was president, rock and roll was taking over the airwaves, and astronomers thought they had the universe pretty much figured out. They knew about galaxies beyond the Milky Way, they understood how stars worked. The universe seemed vast but relatively simple. Then something changed. As radio astronomy technology improved, scientists started picking up mysterious signals from space. These weren't the usual radio waves they expected from stars or galaxies. Instead, they found tiny points of incredibly intense radio emission scattered across the sky. Some appeared within our galaxy's band of stars while others seemed to come from empty space. If these objects were nearby, they should have been visible with optical telescopes, but they weren't. And if they were far away, they had to be impossibly bright. Many scientists refused to believe what they were seeing. After all, how could anything be that powerful? Then came 1962, and with it, a discovery that would change our understanding of the universe forever. Two astronomers, Cyril Hazard and John Bolton, used a clever trick. They waited for the moon to pass in front of one of these mysterious radio sources called 3C273. This allowed them to pinpoint its exact location with unprecedented accuracy. Enter Martin Schmidt, a Dutch-American astronomer working at the Palomar Observatory. When he pointed his telescope at that precise spot, he found something that would shake astronomy to its core. The light from this object showed something incredible. Its spectral lines were shifted toward the red end of the spectrum by an astounding 16%. Using this red shift, Schmidt calculated that 3C273 was over 3 billion light years away. Emos, making it the most distant object that observed at that time. But here's the truly mind-blowing part. Despite being so incredibly far away, this object was still bright enough to be visible in amateur telescopes. Think about that for a second. This would be like seeing a single lighthouse from the other side of the universe. Now, you might be wondering what could possibly be powerful enough to shine that bright. The answer would take decades to discover, and it starts right here in our own cosmic backyard. At the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, astronomers discovered something strange, a powerful source of radio waves they named Sagittarius A. When they looked closer, they found stars whipping around an invisible object at incredible speeds. After careful observations, scientists realized this invisible object had to weigh more than 4 million times the mass of our sun. What they had found was a supermassive black hole, and it wasn't alone. As astronomers looked at other galaxies, they found something remarkable. Nearly every large galaxy seems to have one of these monsters at center. Now we're getting to the really good stuff, how these cosmic monsters actually work. And trust me, it's more incredible than anything science fiction has come up with. When gas falls toward a black hole, something amazing happens. Instead of just falling straight in, it forms what we call an accretion disk. Imagine water spiraling down a drain, but at nearly the speed of light. As this gas squeezes closer together, it heats up. We're not talking about hot like your oven, or even hot like the surface of the sun. This gas reaches temperatures of millions of degrees. Let me put this in perspective. Our sun converts about 0.1% of its matter into energy through nuclear fusion. Pretty efficient, right? Well, these cosmic monsters convert about 10%. That's 100 times more efficient. If your car was as efficient as a quasar, you could drive around the Earth 100 times on a single drop of gasoline. But that's just the beginning. All this superheated gas creates plasma, the same state of matter you find in lightning bolts. And when you spin plasma at nearly light speed, you get something incredible. Powerful magnetic fields begin to form and twist around the black hole like invisible cosmic cables. These magnetic fields get wound up tighter and tighter until 
Boom. They launched jets of particles at nearly the speed of light, shooting out from both poles of the black hole. These jets can stretch for millions of light years longer than entire galaxies. They're so powerful they can pierce through multiple galaxies and heat up the Sanishin. And remember those radio waves that first led us to discover quasars. This is where they come from. Now, here's where this story gets personal because these monsters might actually be crucial for our existence. Scientists have discovered something remarkable. The size of a galaxy's central black hole is directly related to the galaxy's properties. The bigger the black hole, the bigger the galaxy. It's like the black hole and galaxy are dancing together, each controlling the other's growth. When too much gas flows into a galaxy's center, the black hole fires up into a quasar. All that energy pushes back against incoming gas, preventing too many stars from forming too quickly. Think of it like a cosmic thermostat, keeping galaxy growth at just the right temperature. Without this control, our galaxy might have burned through its star-forming fuel billions of years ago and Earth might never have formed. But the story isn't over. In about 5 billion years, our Milky Way will collide with our nearest large neighbor, the Andromeda Galaxy. When these galaxies crash together, enormous amounts of gas will fall toward their central black holes. And when that happens, our now quiet black hole will roar back to life as a quasar, lighting up our corner of the universe with the power of a trillion suns. We can already see hints of past activity. Two enormous bubbles of radiation stretch above and below our galaxy left over evidence from the last time our black hole had a snack. So there you have it, the story of the most powerful engines in the universe. From mysterious radio signals to cosmic monsters that shape entire galaxies, quasars remind us that the universe is far more extreme and fascinating than we could have ever imagined. These cosmic lighthouses illuminate not just space, but our understanding of how galaxies grow and evolve. They show us that even the most destructive forces in nature can play crucial roles in creating the conditions necessary for life. Thank you for joining me on this adventure through space and time. Until next time, keep looking up.